Hi, everyone. Welcome to another AWS Blogger podcast. My name is John Meyer, and in this special edition, this isn't about AWS in general, but about the tools that I use in order to do my live stream events. Specifically, an awesome solution that a colleague, Jeff Barr, suggested I use called OBS Ninja. Before I tell you more about OBS Ninja, I think we should bring on the developer and creator of it. All right, let's bring you on. Let me introduce Steve Segwin. Steve, how are you? Hi, I'm doing great, John. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes. So before we begin and jump into this one, uh, I got to thank you on this awesome product that I stumbled upon thanks to a colleague and used for it. I got to give a full backstory shortly, but I think we should start with, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and OBS Ninja and why you developed it. Okay. So my name's Steve and I'm out in Toronto, uh, Canada. I've been doing live streaming for about the last five, six years now. and I, I've always been very passionate about the underlying technology that it uses called Weber TC. And one of the one of the things I got really excited about was OBS Ninja in 2017. I started building prototypes of it uh, to stream live live games, to, to do live streams with friends. But it was a very simple tool at the time. It was just like a white page. Um, it never got public traction. People weren't really too interested in it at the time. Uh, but once we had the COVID outbreak in in early 2020, I, I knew I needed to release it. And so I spent some time upgrading it, polishing it, and I released it, I guess, around March of 2020. So wait a second. I didn't realize it was so soon that you just released it this year. Um, you mentioned that you've been streaming for five, six years. What a coincidence. I've been streaming for five, six months. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I feel very fortunate to stumble upon this early uh, or in my career here. So this is this is pretty cool. Uh, I'm really glad that you released it, that you've been working on it in development. I can see that it probably didn't have the traction beforehand, but I can tell you right now, I am a huge fan of the product. I use it almost daily. And in fact, I'll be using it probably from here on out. Uh, Steve and I talk a lot actually offline about some of the things, yeah. some of the features and enjoy some of the conversations. So I really, I'm very impressed with it and I can't say enough about it. As everybody knows, I'd probably drop at least an OBS Ninja video, a two to three minute video on my website, which I'll drop into the comment section later. Thank you, John. <laughs> Your your videos are great. They're much better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I have a, I have a, a little backstory. Um, I used to be a trainer, so I have this software and develop it. And my videos, I take a look at my YouTube thing and how I started out. I had no frames, no scenes. It was kind of dry all over the place. Uh, the quality has definitely grown. I'd have to say that due to the current pandemic, everybody's kind of gotten uh, a different role or trait. And I found a niche that for some reason I'm good at this in front of the camera and just having some fun and being quirky, of course. Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you you mentioned uh, my video and some of the, I do a little bit better of it. I, I got to jump in. I know there's some hidden gems we got to talk about, but what did you think of my file share video yesterday <laughs> that I dropped? And I sent it to you first. Nobody else had a view of it. But You're right. You, you did. You sent it to me unlisted with zero views. Thank you. I think you did a fantastic job. There's a lot of setup there. You green screen, right? I, I, I personally had a, a laugh at the stereoscopic red and, red and blue glasses. Like I, in 2011, I had a, a 3D radio sharing site. And so I have a box of 3D glasses. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready memories. for it. But um, yeah, hilarious. Uh, well done, man. I, I thought it was hilarious. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, I have to, your product and what you've done is an inspiration to all my playlists and quick videos. I feel that people don't know enough about it. I need to share it. And when I come across things, I am a natural like evangelist type. And I, I feel like I got to throw it out there. The UI that you did, the new UI. Now, granted, I personally didn't have anything wrong with the old one, but I do like the new one, I have to tell you. And some of the features, and we'll get, we're going to get into those, but the new UI looks really good. Thank you. 
Uh, that's community feedback. OBS Ninja is largely driven by feedback. So if you have a request, an idea, or suggestions, uh, that's what's driving the development. So it's the community's design. Actually, I have to give credit to that one too because I'm I jump in there in the community stuff and I'll I'll hey has anybody ever thought about this and you're like you're not the first person or I'll I'll read some of the articles or I jump in and I'm like what about this feature I can make it happen Steve says I'm like whoa 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 wait a second let's let's make sure it's large but I get so excited about some of it just being able to work directly with you as you can see my passion for it and your product so uh, I, I really appreciate that. I, I love building it. This is a passion project for me as well. So now real quick, before we get into OBS Ninja in general, some of the features, some of the hidden gems about that one, uh, the security aspect and the architecture, I got to give a little backstory on how I came across OBS Ninja, but what I was doing ahead of time. And I think this is valuable for everybody. I, so I run a Mac. I love Macs. But as everybody knows, OBS doesn't really work uh, to a full capability or the versions on there. And OBS Ninja does not work with the newest version of OBS. And, you know, and plus OBS is a very resource consuming product for that in general for streaming. I started out using it and man, did my laptop heat up. I realized that my laptop only had eight gigs at the time, but we won't go there. Um, and so I started using some other Mac native software for streaming and they were all right, but I, I wanted the functionality of OBS. I wanted to pull in streams. I wanted to do some things. I want to move people around. I didn't want to be limited to where it was. And I was just, I actually was doing a live interview with Jeff Barr, who is an AWS chief evangelist, right? And we we're about to go live. It didn't work. I mean, <laughs> if you're going to fail, you got to fail hard. And man, did I fail. And I'm troubleshooting this, not realizing that my stream was still going and people were getting blips of me troubleshooting it with Jeff live. I got a lot of compliments on how I handled that situation. But so I'm like, man, what the heck is going on? We had to reschedule this. And in the meantime, Jeff actually did a community day in Australia using your product. I, AWS used it. They used it for their entire event. Amazing. I'm not yeah. sure. I didn't you didn't know that? that? Yes. No. <laughs> they used it. And I had a counterpart out there show me the next day how you used it. And by the way, if you're about to show somebody a demo, do not use the room name test room with no password. You never know who's going to show up. <laughs> so apparently somebody else heard about it then. And we had test room, no password. We just jumped in and he was showing me some of the features. And then all of a sudden somebody else joined our room. And we're like, what's going on? And it was a gentleman from Germany. So we had an American, an Australian, and a German in this thing. And I'm sure there's a joke somewhere about it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I was hooked. And the easy of the, I no matter what, I was jumping into this one full force. And to this day, I use it. Uh, I use it for everything and I can manipulate it. And if you take a look at some of the streams I've done, not only on Twitch and YouTube, all done using OBS Ninja and pulling myself in there. Fantastic. I'm, I'm, that's why I'm building it. So thank you. Uh, and it's actually grown. I, I do push it out. Oh, don't push it out. I more or less suggest it to my AWS counterparts and our evangelist team and provide them all the information about it and fully support. So, all right. I think it's time to jump in here into OBS Ninja real quick. Uh, if you want to give us a high level, how is it architected? Because I'm kind of curious how things sure. are coming together behind the scenes. So I went into this with a certain philosophy, uh, privacy, uh, security, free, and an objective of making it as serverless as possible. Uh, I, I feel like I can reduce the overhead of ma maintaining the service. I can reduce the cost if I make it serverless. And I, I built other projects that were server-based and there's lots of um, benefits of having a server-based solution, but there's also a lot of drawbacks. Uh, so with OBS Ninja, uh, it's largely peer-to-peer -peer based, meaning that everyone in a room or anyone watching a stream or publishing a stream is directly connected to the viewers or to the publishers. There is no central server that the video is going through. Uh, this provides quite a bit of benefit. There's no servers that I need to pay high bandwidth and CPU cost for. There's no limit on what 
bitrate you can send. It's really, it comes down to your computer and your network. So you can push 40, 50, 60 megabits per second to appear, uh, including 4K video. And there's very low latency since there's no, uh, again, no server you have to go through, no peak usage that some servers face that might slow you down midday. Uh, so th that's the fundamental idea. It's peer-to-peer -peer based. And we can get down to more detail on how it works. For example, um, there's rooms and there's a stream ID. Uh, stream ID is the fundamental concept. It's like a, a, a lookup number. It can be up to 30 characters long, alpha alphanumeric. And there's a simple handshake server that essentially indexes um, who's requesting and who's publishing what. And so with OBS Ninja, you essentially uh, get told who has the stream you're looking for, who's publishing that stream. And it allows those two individuals to find each other and they connect uh, over a data connection, uh, a peer-to-peer -peer data connection that's encrypted. And once that data connection is established, you can then start agreeing on what video, what media you want to share. And over that data connection, you start sending video and audio back and forth. Um, it the, the, the main limit versus a server solution would be, this is a mesh-based solution when you start looking at a room where all the individuals are talking with all the other individuals directly. So once you get beyond 20, 30 guests in a room, you need to start scaling back the video bit rate and the audio bit rate uh, because it's a little bit too much for most computers to handle 30 plus connections. Uh, if you're using a server-based solution, you'd only be talking to the server and the server would be taking all that load on your behalf um, at a cost, of course. Uh, so th that's, that's the fundamental concept of OBS Ninja. Um, peer-to-peer -peer base, and if you're on a local network, uh, it doesn't even go through the internet. It automatically det detects that the two peers are local, and it will establish a local area connection. Oh, I, whoa, wait, I didn't even know that. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, no, all right, so in some of my aspects, when I had my limited laptop, I actually was running two laptops because it's a peer-to-peer -peer connection and it does consume the resources, but an eight gig laptop is really unheard of anymore. Uh, but I was running two and I actually do run two for my events. So that's uh, that's actually really good to know about that one and, some, and how things are working behind the scenes. Yeah, so you can use your iPhone, for example, or, or smartphone Android uh, as a webcam and it won't use up any of your upload uh, bandwidth. And mobile devices have a hardware encoder, so they're not gonna be hit with high CPU load. So it's a, 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 an easy way to get like a, a free wireless webcam if you want um, as well, which is uh, the, the original intent of getting it out quickly was just to give people an opportunity to use it as a webcam because they were all sold out at the time. I actually remember that one. I had I had a really nice one, but then I was doing another for a, a live stream event and the partner wanted to send me their quality one, but they couldn't get it anywhere. It was like six months back order. And I think doing, during the current thing, everybody wanted webcams because they were working from home. So they wanted a good quality one and they were completely sold out at that time. Right. Uh, you know what? You, you mentioned something that I forgot to mention in the beginning. Everybody realized OBS Ninja is free. So just to, and serverless, free, cost effective, all comes down to it. That's actually a pretty cool architecture and structure that you got there. Thank you. It's the philosophy that keeps me on target and not having money to spend on servers also uh, helps drive that uh, philosophy. Uh, yes, that's actually probably a good thing. All right, so everybody uh, on the screen, what I dropped there within it is the actual, when you go to obs.ninja, you're gonna see these four options on there, a group chat, a camera to OBS, a remote share into OBS, and then a reusable invite. I'll tell you what, everything I set up, whether it's um, you know just a single event, I usually, I like doing the group one. One, because I like the director panel, I like the admin, I like the functionality. 
uh, with that one. But you can strictly just grab your camera if you're not chatting with anybody and then drop it right into OBS and that's it. Then you have the link for that. Uh, these are really simple. I think having the simple functionality makes it the best software to use and not download or install anything. The uh, add to add camera to OBS link on the main page is the easiest, simplest way to get started. You can actually drag the links from Chrome directly in to OBS. So there's no setup of scenes. You can just drag them in on, on at least on a Windows machine. Uh, so it's an easy way to get started there. Um, most of the links on the main page are, are for getting people warmed up to the service. But once you learn the ins and outs of OBS Ninja, I don't think you end up using those buttons at all. You end up customizing the links uh, yourself just from scratch. Uh, that's at least how I do it. Uh, speaking of that one, one of the things that I figured out probably in August is I do a lot of live streaming events for AWS and internal ones. And I had to, every time I had somebody join, I got a unique streaming ID and then I had to put them into OBS and I had to manage it all from my desk while I'm running a live stream. I'm like, hold on one second, I gotta go put it in. And one of the cool things I put together was an OBS uh, URL generator, and it's just an Excel spreadsheet, by the way. Uh, <laughs> that's all it is, no lie. Uh, what I do is I put the room name, I put the password, and I drop the person's name in there, and the person's name is now the stream ID. So just like this meeting, I send Steve a URL, said, here's your URL, here's your password. I already had OBS set up and pre-configured, so when he joined, he's in all my scenes, that's it. I didn't have to do a single thing. It's just some pre-work ahead of time, but I'm ready to go. That way, if Steve, for some reason you drop, maybe the participant dropped out or I crashed and you're just hanging on there, guess what? My stream's still running. And if I rejoin, I'm gonna come right back into OBS and it's gonna be the same ID and I'm not gonna have to worry about that uniqueness. All right, same position on screen, same ID. Yep. Uh, it's, it's pretty solid and you can reuse it ongoing as long as it's not already in use by someone else. Um, you can reclaim it as much as you want. Uh, then the main reason that on the main page, it generates a, a stream ID for most users rather than asks is the security aspect. And that is people almost always enter test one, two, three, uh, assuming that it's not going to be in use. Uh, and so and, until you get more familiar with the service, um, I auto generate random and relatively secure stream IDs, um, seven characters long, random, alphanumeric. So you can you can memorize them. But uh, if, you, if you do customize it, you do want to be aware that security it becomes more of a concern then. Yeah, so I, you, you actually touched on that uh, in general. And that's our next topic here is security around it. Granted, my stream ID is maybe the name who's joining, and I really am conscious about the password that I create because now I don't have that uniqueness. Now I have a True. name, and obviously there's more than one John in the world. I'm sorry to say that. Uh, and you know that doesn't make it unique unless I have that uh, really difficult password. So I try to kind of put that in the place because security is all that. but. Also, good, talking about security, let's jump into a couple of those. Is there any data that resides anywhere? Because you just told us that it just passes directly through. There's no nothing resides. You're using serverless. I think you're touching a lot of security aspects there. Yeah. So again, I, I built it uh, with the goal of, of being as secure as possible. And uh, it, my strategy is you can't be hacked. You can't be exploited if you, if you don't allow the system that opportunity. Um, so there's no databases, for example. Uh, in terms of privacy concerns, um, from from a, from a IP sort of point of view, um, the only, the only sort of uh, thing that's being stored is when you connect, um, you have a WebSocket connection. That that is what kind of claims um, the stream in the room more or less. So that WebSocket connection, as long as it's persisting, you have a claim on that stream or that room. Um, when you disconnect, um, all that automatically vaporizes. 
So any any information automatically disappears. Um, I don't really ask for any name. There's no sort of email. There's no sign up. So there there really isn't any data to collect. Um, there's no IP logging. And when it comes to uh, you know, you can deploy the code yourself. I've tried to reduce any sort of third-party dependency. All the code is um, generally hosted, either on OBS Ninja or if you deploy it yourself. Um, things as much as even fonts are kind of locally hosted to prevent any sort of um, tracking that way. Uh, I, I do use Cloudflare as a service, and Cloudflare gives me some basic analytics. Um, so outside of Cloudflare giving me basic usage analytics and having that as, um, uh, well, I, I mentioned them, but um, whichever service I'm using, I'm using that as mainly as a denial of service uh, switch. So if the site does get hit, I can turn that on and uh, secure the site a little bit more that way. Um, yeah, so from, from from a data collection point of view, that there, there really isn't any. There, there aren't any cookies being used. There aren't uh, any data side, uh, server side data collection. Um, and the code is available on GitHub uh, if needed as well. You know what's uh, uh, interesting? Now you mentioned, can I actually deploy this in my own environment and, and set it up? Or... Or did I hear that wrong? You said if you wanted to download it or install it or there's no third party stuff. Can you clarify that? Uh, so like uh, if you go to GitHub, yep. um, 99% of the code uh, is available on GitHub as open source, uh, AGPL. So um, op a yeah, open source. Um, that is you know, all the JavaScript and HTML code. And so you can deploy that to your own website. Um, it gives you access to customizing the brand, um, customizing the interface, adjusting defaults. Um, one example would be, we talked about uh, passwords and uh, protection that way. When you when you deploy the code to a, to your own domain, all the stream IDs, all the rooms, they're encrypted and hashed using your domain as a salt. Um, so from that point of view, uh, if you do deploy just the, the JavaScript code on a website, you can kind of have some sense of ease. If you do create a room called test123, uh, users from the main site, the main OBS Ninja site, won't be able to access that room. It won't really exist. It will be a hashed um, alternative name. Oh, nice. So th there, there's isolation between deployments. Okay. You can also change the default uh, hash and default password if you deploy the code yourself. And all peer connections in, uh, in the last couple of versions have all been encrypted, um, not just over media, so not just the video data, which has always been encrypted, but now the uh, initial kind of handshake is encrypted. Um, so you add a password to this invite between me and you. And so that has hashed and encrypted uh, the stream ID, the room ID, and our handshake. But uh, if you didn't specify a password, it would still use a, a default password based on the domain's name. So as soon as you deploy oh. the code somewhere else, it will automatically change the default password to ensure that um, there's isolation across different deployments. I, I okay, that that that's awesome um, to know about. I did not know all that happens if I install it separately. Granted, by the way, I'm not going to do it because I like just going to OBS Ninja and then off and running in five seconds. Uh, but that's actually pretty cool to know for some, you know, customers, some people that want to use it. I, I love the fact that it's open source. It's free. Uh, Steve never asked for anything like that. Uh, buy him coffee. Uh, that's always a good one for that one. Caffeine is great. Uh, for Steve, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I know he's up <laughs> at all times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I guess, 
So that's a secure, the security that you're mentioning there is really interesting. If I install it separately or if I just use your product, I'm glad you're clarifying some of that because that's really what some of the things I'm missing or I need clarification on when I talk about this to other AWS people or other people that want to use it. What type of security is around it? I will reference this video for everybody. Please cut the certain section, listen to security. Um, that actually goes into, so those are some of the hidden things. And I think that kind of goes into some of the questions we're going to ask is some hidden features and gems that I like to call with regards to OBS Ninja. Uh, something that I actually learned along the way, or I'll ping Steve and go, uh, Steve, I want to do this. And you're like, yeah, just put in this prefix or put in this and it does it. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know that. Some of the things you're like, uh, and I've talked about this for within my OBS Ninja playlist, no audio. If you want to do screen share, it's really just the URL and you're just doing and no audio or show only, which was another one. And Steve talked about this with regards to your iPhone. Steve, you want to give a little feedback on the iPhone and why you don't see the video? And then I can reference my video on how you can force it. So uh, you mentioned hidden features and the, there's lots of them. Many of them are URL parameters you have to enter in. Uh, some of these features are um, a way for me to test them out before I, I push them live into production by default, for example. So with the iPhone, uh, a challenge is it has three hardware encoders. And once you uh, kind of use up those three hardware encoders that are limited to 720 uh, at 30 frames a second, um, iOS just starts pushing black. It doesn't give you an error. It just starts pushing black video out. And so uh, in, in the earlier versions, as of just recently, actually, um, I had it so all guests in, in a room uh, only got black video. In this case, I just disabled the hardware encoder and I only made the hardware encoder available for uh, the OBS uh, scenes so that you can get high quality video that way. Uh, some things I made to help that. And, and um, one is I introduced a new feature. It's another hidden feature called uh, style equals two. Um, I'm introducing this concept called styles and effects that you can change the style of how aspects of OBS Ninja work. But style equals two, for example, would replace the black with a audio waveform. So as the person oh. speaks, you'll get a audio waveform showing up. Um, so that, that's an interesting way to make those video free group rooms, like audio only rooms be a little more interesting. Uh, as well, in the current version, I think iOS might uh, actually now try to use the VP8 codec, which is software based. And I have it creating a one frame per second video stream that it pushes out. So I, I, I don't know if this is gonna work for all cases. So it, it's, it is in production now and it should ha actually happen by default. But if you connect with an iPhone to a group room, it will try to push VP8 as a secondary stream at one frame a second, I'm trying to really limit the CPU load on that system. Um, so it will still use H.264 to push the main OBS, but it will try to use VP8 for guests as kind of like a, a kind of a, a choppy avatar of sorts. Now, wait, uh, you said it's in production now. So if I join now and we're it. Yeah, if you, if you join with your iPhone, uh, you, you might, you should be, you should see you, us. Um, you know, I'm going to try this, right? So. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I, Nothing again, works better than live. <laughs> yeah. It used uh, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> I got to go there. Let's do, do this one. No pressure. I actually no shut my mouth. Uh, come on. You'll be fine on this one. All right. All right. Uh, what's do, 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 do. Uh, I got to go to my. You know, I got this cool thing. I'm going to drop it to myself and join. Hold on. All right, let's see if we got this. Uh, open this up. 
This is typically how I do things live to see if it's working. Why I get this going, there was some uh, cool video I did with the, um, what was it, iOS Force, the video that I put on there that I was able to see my iPhone or the video captured within the group chat. Else we have a little silhouette of a guy. What do you call that, by the way? Yeah, I, I was calling it uh, an avatar or a silhouette. Avatar. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll take that one. The, the goal at one point was to allow people to select their own kind of image as a placeholder, but I never got around to adding that feature. There wasn't enough uh, community request for it. You know what? It doesn't like uh, Safari usually has that issue. Why do you not like me, Safari? Hold on. S Safari you know, oh, is the bane of my existence. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to go there on that one. <laughs> Sorry. It's getting better. It's getting better. But until, until just 2008, um, none of this was really possible with, with an IO, with an iOS device. So, um, you know, what's interesting. Maybe I don't have permissions turned on for it to access my mic or whatever. Yeah. Microphone video face. Uh, do I have the right URL? All right, let's move on here. Yeah, OBS. That's my right one. I, I tell you, I, I just like doing things live and figuring it out. Well, oh, we can, we can debug after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. I, I usually, what happens? Did I actually spell? I got an error, but I got a room. Don't worry about it. Okay. Sorry, Steve, to put you there on the spot. Uh, I think I actually have the microphone and audio turned off on my Chrome, and then I have to go into the settings. But we're going to move on here. Uh, we'll play around with it a little bit later. Maybe I'll do a video of it. I wanted to show it on the screen, but as always. You know, one of the things I want to talk about is the recent release of the new UI and one of the features that I've been raving about that you I had a chance to test in beta before you went to production, which was the transfer feature. <laughs> By the way, I have so many use cases for this one. I've actually presented it internally, thinking our next conferences, uh, AWS has a free reInvent conference coming up here on November 30th to the 18th of December. And the director panel or the admin control room that you do has the ability to transfer uh, maybe a, a user from one to another, and they don't even know about it. That's actually the cool part. It's it's, it's um, also highly secure because uh, that transfer doesn't happen on on the client side, really. Yeah. Um, so it's they don't know which which room they get moved to, so they can't reaccess it on their own. Um, I'm having some users using it for call-in shows, so they have like a call-in room. They get 30, 40 people calling in, and then they transfer someone to the main room um, that's more protected, more isolated. And you can kick people out of the room after and bring in a next caller. Uh, yeah. It, it, it I, a... Go ahead. I was actually going to say I suggested that we use it as a green room. And you know how you sit in on the green room and everybody's waiting to be going exactly. on to the show? Well, guess what? I have all 30 or 40 people sitting here in the green room ready to be moved over into the actual show and their audio and everything transfers over. I tested it out. I did a video on it. It's, it's freaking awesome. Uh, that was the one that I, I just dropped out there right away to everybody. The moment it was live, I made a quick video on it. Uh, that was a highly requested feature. It, it took a long time to get the infrastructure in place to do that. Um, when, when you're dealing with peer-to-peer -peer connections, uh, everything is a lot harder. And there's a lot of features that are kind of limiting me on, on that front, but um, that was a highly requested user feature. So worth well worth the effort. I liked it. I mean, I completely... I have so many use cases for it that I want to mess around with. I'll I'll definitely 
Uh, when we use it, I'm going to highlight it a little more. Hey, in this case, we used, you know, Steve's awesome feature of transferring back and forth. So don't worry about that. One. We're going to have a little fun. And yes, I was playing around with my phone, trying to get it to work as everybody can see. For some reason, Steve, I got uh, error on it to suppress. It says it can't access my webcam or microphone. And that's my security setting. So just to let everybody know, it's not Steve, it's me. I don't have time to mess around with it right now when you go live. <laughs> no worry. Hey, listen, you never know what's going to happen on the show. Uh, are there any other cool features or hidden gems that you might want to share? Oh, man. Okay. Um, well, that people don't know about. Yeah. And yes, you can find out through the wiki, which we will share later. Right now, I'm looking at uh, our, our, our chat, and I'm seeing that my video is actually highlighted in red. Um, most people don't realize it, but there's a tally light system built in. So when I'm active in OBS, um, I get notification as a viewer that I'm live. Um, there's a red outline right. over behind each video. This is specific to OBS, but uh, it, yeah, you toggle in and out. And when you toggle out, it disappears. When you toggle in, it turns red. Um, so yeah, there, there's some low level communication with OBS and I'm, I'm getting feedback from the system to then tell the, the peer that they're active or not. Now, wait a second, wait a second. I see the red around mine now. Yeah. And that means that I'm active in OBS. No, oh, yeah. so, oh, and you're seeing the red on your side. Oh, that's pretty awesome. I didn't even know that. That's actually a good indicator to the end user that they are being used within OBS, that it's actually uh, in use. Yeah. It, 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 need, it needs more work, but there hasn't really been any user feedback uh, requesting for it. But uh, I wonder if people get a little bit confused by it. Maybe I could, should change it up to say on you're on air, you, you're live. I, I don't quite know. But this is a mm -hmm. subtle way of doing it that um, those who know about it uh, might appreciate. All right, so we gotta we gotta get some feedback here from the audience. Put on the spot. Oh, somebody said put on the spot <laughs> for I guess the iOS thing. Yeah, don't, it's all on me, not Steve. You know, after this, Steve will be pinging me. Let's work on this and try to figure this out. It's not. It's only thing. Uh, that that you're welcome for getting it explained. Let me do a poll here, and if you're not in the live chat, no big deal. If you didn't know about the red square, like myself. All right. What what would you like? Does the red now that you know about it? Does that indicate that you're on air? Does does that clear for you that you are in OBS, or would you like a bigger indicator? Let's take a poll on that one. We'll get back to you, Steve, on some of the things, mm -hmm. and we'll drop that in there. I didn't even know. It's, so I I gotta ask. I know we have uh, we're about twenty of here, but are there any other cool features like this that you want to share with me that I can go wow? Because you know I'm gonna do a playlist on all of these, right? Oh man. Um, cool features. I, there, there's so many neat things. Um, so, so a lot of these features that are, that are, are really neat, I find are too advanced for users. Um, there, there's something that I, I'd recommend a lot of users use if they're worried about video quality stability. And that's the Electron Capture app, which is like a companion app for OBS Ninja. Mac users mainly use it uh, to bypass the, the lack of support in OBS. But one of the uh, aspects of OBS, um, sorry, uh, the Electron Capture app in OBS Ninja, is I've optimized this, uh, this Chromium app called the Electron Capture app to have really stable video quality, high encoding performance, lower CPU usage. Um, it has less susceptibility to packet loss. But one of the coolest things it has is it supports a feature called buffer. And you can specify a custom sized jitter buffer using that, which means that it waits longer for frames and packets to come in from remote guests. And that reduces dropped frames, reduces video corruption. It does introduce, introduce a little bit of latency. But for some guests who are you're really struggling with with OBS, you can pull them into the Electron Capture app, give them a little bit of a boost to the buffer, and they'll come in much smoother, much more reliable. 
You know what? I haven't used it. I heard about it. I saw your drop. You did a video uh, in the beginning of October with a gentleman named Chris in Germany who actually talked about that one. Though I, I got to look at that and play around with it. I am a Mac user, so I think it might be beneficial for me to use or at least to test it a little bit. It, it has some benefits. You can specify the output audio uh, destination through the app. So if you have a virtual audio device, um, loopback is a popular example you could pipe the audio to that and then you can manage all the audio routing yourself um, nice interesting uh you know i want to play around i want to get like that working on my phone you know that i am i'm i'm, I'm ocd like that man <laughs> I, I i i know it's not you it's me i want to show you some cool features all right i'm gonna move on but uh you know i get a little stuck on some of the things all right uh, so you, you talked about some of the hidden gems. Are there any features that you're working on you want to share or that are upcoming stuff that the community asked for? Yeah, like I, there's a lot of things the community asked for. I, I am working hard on uh, something that I've been working probably the hardest on and I haven't quite yet got to a point where I'm ready to release it is this concept of um, like uh, kind of like an adapter for OBS Ninja that converts from OBS Ninja to something that is not necessarily a browser um, video. So converting to RTSP, converting to NDI, converting to something else that you can um, allows for some flexible uh, more professional applications and workflows. Not everyone likes using a browser source uh, video element. Not all production software can use it. So the idea is maybe offering a downloadable app that converts OBS Ninja to NDI, for example, uh, would open up a lot of opportunity for some users who have a, an existing workflow they want to maintain. So I, I've, I've got this working on um, Windows and Mac. But the problem I'm having is it's uh, it requires quite a bit of deployment, quite a bit of installation on on dependencies, and so it's it's quite challenging for most users to use. I'm still trying to work towards compiling it up, getting some bugs worked out. Um, video quality degrades pretty quickly. High CPU usage. Um, but yeah. Uh, that's going to open up a lot of a lot of opportunities. It will open up the ability to reduce CPU load. Um, it will reduce network uh, load. It will allow you to do um, more stable video recordings, um, and it will hopefully enable Mac users to use OBS uh, in, in perhaps a, a slightly more flexible way than currently. Yeah, because currently it's version what twenty six is on a, a Mac only supported with OBS Ninja. Which, if you download the newest one, you want all some of the features, some of the scenes and everything show up different with the icons with the newer version. But uh, I, I think so. The main thing that you mentioned there was a CPU load, and that is the only thing uh, that I, I have. A, like I said, a, a more performance laptop here. And I shut a lot of things down, but that is it. Other than that, the quality that comes out from OBS Ninja to OBS and the ability to just drop people a URL and say, here, join this one is uh, hands down the best thing. I, 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 I love it. I love the I love the peer to peer connection aspect because it means every connection, every video stream is personalized down to which codecs, which resolution, it maximizes the bandwidth that the other individual has. Yep. So if you have a fast enough computer with a fast enough connection, you can push 40 megabytes per second to multiple users of different codexes. Um, everything everything is personalized. Um, one of the, the Electron Capture app, I'm, I'm adding features to it to try to allow for that same sort of flexibility at a lower CPU usage. And so I'm doing a lot of custom work to the uh, video encoder within the Chromium uh, kind of core of the Electron Capture app to enable hardware encoding, to enable reuse 
of video packets um, with the goal being that that CPU aspect will be uh, hopefully eliminated or, or substantially reduced. It, it won't necessarily fix uh, upload requirements, but it should at least fix the, the most annoying part, um, CPU load. It's just a very challenging task to do well. And I don't want to release it until it works. Yeah, so that's actually a really good thing. I've asked Steve a couple of, uh, I guess, enhancements, and he always holds off making sure that he releases a good quality with the, most of the bugs or everything fixed that he's aware of. Yeah. Trust me <laughs> uh, that you are aware of uh, for that one. Example was the new UI. He held back a couple of extra days for it because uh, I guess you were working on a couple of bugs around that. Um, one of the questions I, I do have for you, and I think we talked about this one, the ability to share your camera and the screen at the same time. Right. I believe you have something that does that, or it's a beta, or it was like a dual, a duet yeah. uh, type. So I guess that's a feature that a lot of people don't know, is I have a API for OBS Ninja, and it's, it's hard to have an API for something that's kind of serverless, but the way this works is it's an iframe API meaning that you can treat OBS, uh, OBS Ninja streams as kind of like just like a, a video uh, element. And you can communicate with this iframe that looks like a, a video element. You can send play commands. You can send uh, load, change bit rate, um, mute. And you can interact with it uh, via this iframe API. And so to enable multi-streams on a single page, I do have some prototype code. I haven't really gone it to a point where I'm comfortable with it, um, but it allows you to create multiple OBS Ninja sessions um, by essentially creating an iframe overlay that you can move around the screen. Um, so if you want a screen share, you can say, uh, create a new OBS Ninja session, resize it down to maybe a picture in picture, and then move it to the side. So it's uh, picture in picture, essentially a, a full OBS Ninja session um, as an iframe overlaid within OBS Ninja itself. Um, that, that's that's the strategy I'm trying to move towards tackling kind of multi streams. Uh, th there is another way of doing it. I haven't really figured out the UX of how on how I would do it. I could push multiple video tracks over a peer connection. So I could push multiple cameras, multiple screens, um, mix and match that. I do that for audio already, where you can push multiple audio sources. You can select um, more than one mic by holding control down. But uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, whoa, 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 wait a second. Uh, OK, I, I didn't. Go ahead. So I am taking notes. When you, when, when you join, you can select uh, multiple audio elements by holding control. You can check off uh, screen share and a mic source, for example. So you can mix your mic and a screen sh screen share audio together within the same video. Um, but for for video, it's a little bit harder because how do I mix video? Um, if someone shares a screen and a webcam, users are expecting control over all that. Uh, at the moment, each video has its own stream ID. So how do I provide the flexibility the users are looking for when there's only one stream ID? Um, I can auto kind of side by side them. I can do picture and picture by default. But if someone's sharing a screen, they want to be able to full screen it or move it around or control it mm -hmm. separately. And how do I give the user that flexibility? So from a technical point of view, it's it's quite easy for me to add, but from a user experience, I haven't solved that. Um, so I haven't added the functionality. One of the things that I do is I open up another browser and I'm running to OBS Ninja locally, uh, which allows me to share an application and my video and manipulate that into OBS. That was my workaround for that one. Or what I would do is run another laptop with the camera that was sitting right here an OBS screen share ninja on this one uh, for that. So there are plenty of workarounds that I was doing for this type of events. One of them is presentation. 
you want to see their view where I put them in a little box, the person, and they want to show their screen on it. And that's that's kind of the uh, features that I was looking for with that one. It'd be nice to be able to do that in one application. But at the same time, I have to tell those who do that don't have anything else running because of the CPU intense, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, when, when it comes to CPU load and things like that, obviously reducing the resolution, reducing the bit rate makes a big difference. Yep. Um, 360p, 540p resolution. These are relatively accessible um, resolutions you can use um, just because uh, video is kind of like an exponential with time height. So 1080p is a magnitude more uh, computationally intense than 360p. And, mm -hmm. and, and the quality difference most users notice um, sometimes isn't worth it. Um, but yeah. I got to show you something here. By the way, I told you I am running it. You got it right working. <laughs> on my phone. Thank you, everybody. I told you I was going to get it to work. I got the OCD, and I don't want to put uh, him on the spot <laughs> here. Uh, so, protest for freedom. Hey, I want to let you know here it is. It is on, running. I can see myself in the director one, no issues. Uh, Hey, Steve, I told you, if I'm going to put you on the spot and it don't work, I'm going to figure it out real quick. Here, it was just Safari setting of allowing it, and it never even asked me if I wanted to allow it, by the way. So um, I didn't have that setting in my iOS. I just said, always allow and just let it go so I can get it running. But just so everybody's aware, here it is. You know, you can see it. No, here, hold on a second. Uh, there you go. You can see, Steve. All right. Yeah, I, I see it. Fantastic. All right. Awesome there on that. But uh, I did want to show that only because uh, I put you on the spot. All right. So real quick, um, I already talked about the pre-populated URLs that we've, you know, those predefined ones. It's very simple to do. Uh, check out my uh, playlist on YouTube on how I put it together. And I showed you some of the things. You can also do that, uh, a predefined a reusable invite one on uh, OBS Ninja. I've played around with that one, but I kind of like customizing it myself uh, a little bit. And I think right now, so Steve, I'd like to end this with a little bit of information on my end, and then I'll give you the floor. One, everybody go to obsninja.com and look down at the bottom into the description. You have the wiki in there, very important. Uh, click on that one, how to join Reddit, some of the pages. Also, when you join and you hit to, to uh, the wiki for that one, take a look at all the features. Now, not all of them are in there, but there's some of the things that you find out, not only through Steve or through the group chat. Steve tries to get those in as much as possible, but it's very important. By the way, this is free, completely free. So a quick suggestion is to donate a little something here. If you like the product, you really enjoy it, donate. I love doing it because I get the full support of everything through the community and I love the product. Uh, join Reddit, Discord's another one and uh, join, follow me on YouTube for all my playlists on there. That's pretty much all I have. Steve, is there anything you'd like to add before we kind of end this? You've, you've done multiple donations now, so thank you very much. That's super kind. Um, if, if you, Really, I, I'm looking for feedback, looking for bug reports. All those help me drive the product forward. So understanding your use case, giving me feedback, uh, that that's mainly what I, I hope I can get from people. Um, just because I'm otherwise I'm working blind. I'm on Discord virtually all the time. So if you have any problems, you can check that out. And uh, I do that. Hey, yeah. Steve, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> and, and and if you're worried about uh, things breaking, um, there's a backup URL, backup.obs.ninja. And so that's a fully isolated deployment. Um, if anything goes wrong, you can always turn to that as well. So th there's lots of mechanisms for, for support. I, I'm really focused on making sure everyone is successful. Uh, so you can contact me any way you want, email, Discord, Reddit, YouTube, however. Actually, that's very important. I wanted to do a recording for the backup uh, one because not many people know about it. It is in the wiki that it is available and I have so many use cases and contingency plans around it. Okay, so 
Uh, I have never once, not even once, had an issue with OBS Ninja of using or running. But does not mean that something will not happen out of Steve's control. But he built in a backup for that one. My suggestion is go ahead, play around with it, set it up, get all your predefined links. If something goes wrong, flick it over, you're done. Back and live. There, there's some users who have maybe a million users in an audience and they're using call-in links. And so sometimes I might get like 100,000 people slamming, slamming the service. Um, that can cause maybe a slowdown. Um, it, it shouldn't. I, I'm always trying to stay ahead of the curve here. Um, the site's growing this month alone, 79% growth this month. Um, so, you know, it's, I, I don't know what to expect going into the future. So, um, thankfully everything's peer to peer. So the load on me is pretty light, but, uh, yeah, thank you. So there was one thing that somebody mentioned. They could not believe that this product was not an enterprise product actually being offered out there, that this was a open source built by you, shared and feedback from the audience. And they're like, what? you know, they could not believe it. I am amazed as well, but I love the community aspect of it and being able to communicate with you directly and not have to go through, yes, hello, OBS Ninja support. How can I help you? Press one. And I'm like, no, I, I'm not good with that. <laughs> There's always someone available on Discord or Reddit to help with any problems, yep. usually within a few minutes or seconds even. Um, and yeah, I think it's all about passion. So uh, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't really enjoy it. I agree with you. Uh, I can sense your passion. I have a huge passion to use your product. So I'm going to end this now, Steve. Thank you for building such an awesome product and for joining me on the show. I know it's a little quirky every now and then as we do it, but uh, you know what? Completely improv. I got some questions other than that. You never know what happens, like your phone not working and then working. So <laughs> I'll look into that. Uh, that was me. <laughs> Not on you. Save yourself some time and troubleshooting. Work on some more of the other stuff. Uh, thank you, Steve. I really appreciate you joining me. I hope to do a couple more of these in the future. Maybe we'll do some quick 10-minute ones on new or recent releases and feedback that you want to give to the audience. And also take notice to the little red bar around it that I did not know. The box that goes around that says you are in OBS, you're live streaming. That's you're actually being communicated with it. That I think is a really cool feature and a good security aspect. Cool. Th thank you, John. All right, Steve, have yourself a good one. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too.